So now we are setting up our e-commerce flows in OmniSense and in particular the site browsing abandonment campaign. So first things first, so what is a site abandonment campaign? So this is a little template over here where I explain how it works. So a contact visits your website. So you send a newsletter to one of your contacts. In that newsletter, there's a link to your store and your contact clicks that link to your store. So that is the trigger for that particular automation, which is the site abandonment campaign automation. So then we wait, for example, one hour, and then there are a couple of filters, as you can see over here. So inside OmniSend, we're gonna make filters to check whether there's a purchase made. So if there is a purchase made, we wanna remove that particular contact from this automation, because this particular automation, this particular flow, is only for the ones that don't purchase your products. Then we have another filter, does that contact view a product page? If yes, we also want to end this automation because we have another automation called the product abandonment campaign. So if that contact didn't view the product page, he's gonna go to the next step. But there is one more filter. Did that contact add the product to the cart? So if yes, then we're gonna end this automation as well. If no, we're gonna go to the next step. So in other words, if a contact clicks a link in your newsletter, and they visit your website, this automation will be triggered. It will become active for that particular contact. If they didn't do anything else besides just visiting your website, so they didn't visit any product pages, they didn't make a purchase, and they didn't add a product to their cart, they're gonna continue down the path of this particular campaign. So a few things to keep in mind. To make this site browsing abandonment campaign work, you have to have an active integration with OmniSend, so with Shopify or WooCommerce. And you also must have site tracking enabled. So I've installed the Shopify app, and once I've installed the Shopify app, the site tracking is enabled automatically. It's probably the same with WooCommerce, I don't know for sure, but you can check it out. And then secondly, the contact must be on your email list, of course. So if just a random person you don't have the contact details from yet, and they visit your website, obviously we cannot add them to that automation because we don't have their contact details. And then also that contact must click a link to your store in your newsletter. So to create this automation, we're gonna click on automation over here, and then we're gonna click on create a new workflow. So if you search on abandonment in the pre-built automation workflows, you can see that they offer five different abandonment uh, pre-built automation you can import into your account. So you can do that as well. But in this case, I'm gonna create one from scratch so you know how to create one yourself so you better understand how to do it. So I'm gonna click on create from scratch. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna rename our automation so we can easily find it again in the future. So I'm gonna change this name and I'm gonna call it the side browsing abandonment campaign. I'm gonna click on update. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click here. We're gonna click on this thing over here. And then if you didn't saw this already, now you'll see this screen and now we're gonna create or edit the trigger for this particular workflow. So we're gonna click this field and we're gonna search for feud page. So this one over here, feud page. Then we can create a trigger filter. So I'm gonna click here, trigger filters. I'm gonna click on add a trigger filter. And then over here, we can select this drop down. And over here we have the URL. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna say contains. And then I'm gonna enter the URL of my store. And then I'm gonna click on save. So whenever someone visits our website that contains at least this part of the URL, this particular workflow will be triggered. I'm not entirely sure by the way, if you have to add this trigger filter. Maybe if you remove this and you just keep the feud page, maybe it also works because this might result in triggering this particular workflow for uh, whatever page they visit on your website. But anyway, it should work definitely right now. And then over here we have the exit conditions. So we're gonna add the three exit conditions that I explained earlier. Here you can see them again. So the purchase made, the feud product page and added product to cart. So I'm gonna click on exit conditions. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so condition one. So I'm gonna search on feud product. So over here, feud product. So I've just added the feud product exit condition and I'm gonna add two more exit conditions. So I'm gonna click here, add another exit condition, condition two. And then we're gonna say add product to cart. And then we're gonna add another exit condition. And I'm gonna use this one, the placed order. And then we also have the frequency filter, which allows us to skip contacts who have been already in this automation in the past. And then we can change this field over here. So let's say in the past four 
14 days. So for example, we do not want to send the same workflow, so the same emails to someone that already has gone through this workflow in the last 14 days, for example. So I'm gonna click on save. So I'm gonna click on update over here. And if we go back to the template, so as you can see, we also have to add a wait trigger. We do not want to send the first email immediately after someone visits our website, of course. We, we want to give them some time to order a product, right? And then we can add more emails if we want. So I'm gonna add a delay inside OmniSend over here. So this is the delay flow action. I'm gonna drag it onto the flow and I'm gonna say wait for one hour and I'm gonna click on update. And now it says unnecessary delay at the end and that's because we don't have any more steps yet. So if we add an email to the workflow, then you'll see that red line will disappear as you can see. So then the next step is to design your email, to create your email. And if you have no clue what to send, you can use tools like this. So we have mailchars.com, we have mailed.com, we have really good emails.com. And if you search on, for example, site abandonment, you can see some examples from other e-commerce companies. Do keep in mind that not every newsletter, as you can see over here, so this one is more of a cart abandonment campaign. So if we click on this one, this is the items in your cart. So this is not a site abandonment campaign, but you can just get some inspiration from checking out these different newsletters. And you can basically be as creative as you want, obviously with this site browsing abandonment campaign. For example, you can also add an AB testing action inside OmniSend. So if I drag this onto my flow over here, you can see we have a path A and a path B, and we can decide here how many people you want to have to go to path A and path B. So now it's just 50-50 and this allows us to test different emails. So I can grab this email over here and I can paste it over here and I can duplicate this email. I'm gonna click on clone and then I'm gonna drag this one over to path A. And now I can just change the subject line, for example, from uh, path A to test A and then test B. So obviously different subject lines. So you can see what subject line works better. What subject line gives me the most revenue. So the most sales, for example. And once you're ready, you're gonna click on update and you're gonna click on start the workflow. So just to give you a little overview of what we just did. So we created this workflow. So the browse abandonment campaign. So when someone visits our website, this workflow will trigger. So it will become active for that particular contact. And then that particular contact will immediately go to this step, wait for one hour. Then we have these exit conditions. So if someone views a product in the meantime, so within that hour, if someone views a product page, they will be removed from this workflow. So then as a second condition, we have added product to the cart. So if someone adds a product to the cart within that one hour, they will also be removed from this workflow. And then we have condition three, placed orders. So if a contact purchase something from your store within that one hour, they will also be removed from this workflow. If they do not do these three things, they will continue to the next step, which in this case is the AB split test. And then we have path A and path B. So they will immediately either be sent email A or email B. So in this particular situation, we don't have any more emails listed over here. So the workflow will end. But let's say we add another delay over here for let's say one day. And then we're going to add another email below that. So just like this. And we can continue this workflow as long as we one, of course, but just to explain the situation real quick. So we added a delay for one day here. So if we go back to the workflow filters, so the exit conditions. So if someone views a product page while they are waiting in this particular step, so maybe they've opened this email and they again visited our store and they now viewed a product page, they will also be removed from this workflow if they're still inside this step. Okay, so that's very important to keep in mind. So these exit conditions are for the entire workflow, no matter what step they're in. So let's say if we choose to continue this workflow for another few days and someone views a product page on day three, for example, they will also be removed from this workflow, just to make sure you understand how these exit conditions work. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.